Series Web Reference provides an excellent review of the Elwood area. We met at the Itty Bitty Bar Cafe in Blissington Street before starting the walk. This is David Newton, walking tour guide for a couple of hour walk around the Elwood region. Elwood was named after a poet, Thomas Elwood. That's right, yes, so you're right there. So it covers quite a few different ones over a period of time. So it's very interesting in that regard. Uh, with something like 157 immigrants. Now back in those days, if you wanted to make more money rather than just haul cargo, you would take immigrants out to Australia with your cargo. Although they didn't think of uh, giving them uh, you know, lovely five-star berths or anything in those days. <laughs> And the, the thing was is that this particular boat arrived here in 1814 on April the 17th, 178 years ago. <coughs> Ten people had died on the boat on the way out. The quarantine station was erected for early settlers near the bay. Now let's get on to the story of Molly Dean by David Newton in Elwood at the time in the 1920s. She was born in 1905. Uh, she was uh, a primary school teacher. I she was all... podcast the other night on this. Shh, oh. <laughs> Susan, you must be sworn to secrecy. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let me see this coming up. Uh, she was an artist muse. She was very active in the Bohemia area uh, of, of society at the time and uh, she also was engaged to be married. Uh, so apart from being an artist herself and a lot of attention uh, cast upon her, uh, of course there's mainly only black and white photos. Uh, a lady came to her front door hearing the moaning cries, quiet moaning cries of, of a lady and discovered a pool of blood around Molly. Uh, she was later rushed to hospital, but died at hospital a few hours later. Uh, the mystery basically was, is quite an interesting one because an inquest was thrown into the whole episode uh, in, uh, in February of 1931, and they couldn't draw any particular conclusions. This is our walking tour. It's Autumn and the trees are changing. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, trading of barbs with a guy called uh, Snowy Cutmore. Now it started out here in this location here, and then it went later on, which you will have seen if you've been on my Ligon Street walk, you would have seen where we went to where they had the final shootout. So it started here, Squizzy it went over, talking over, about. At, uh, over at Carlton, and then later into um, uh, one of the streets, uh, uh, believe it or not, another street called Barclay Street that's also in the... Um, and he was also quite a, a, a nasty tyrant of his day, although the police did credit him only with being just a fairly regular crook that just wanted a bit of fame, and that's all it was. So. This is Squizzy Taylor. <laughs> Squizzy Taylor, yeah. Quizzy lived at 66 Glen Huntley Road, Elwood, and was shot by Snowy Cutmore in Carlton, 27th of October 1927. It'll be a, uh, a cabbie. Talking about flooding. Yep, so it'll be a cabbie. Has it flooded since then? The swamp was drained about 19, 1907. It does flood, does it? Yeah, major. Yeah, and when you get a little bit closer up to it, a bit further, when we go down to some of the older areas of it, which we're going to see shortly, you'll see... In one... Some people may have been flooded. I'll check further on down the catchment close towards the coast. Um, 
I think this opening bit that I'm going to read to you will probably clarify life no quality at Elwood. This was the heartfelt cry of defiant residents from Elwood seeking redress from the government for their common predicament. The swamps regularly flooded, the abattoir dumped offal into the creek, and the smell from human manure de depot was not pleasant. <laughs> then there was the lack of roads and bullets that whistled overhead from the rifle range. <laughs> you didn't even need to have the odd uh, hoodlum in the area. <laughs> That's right. Elwood was isolated from St Kilda by wetlands, distant from Melbourne for business and residents, uh, uh, and the subject of dispute between neighbouring suburbs. At one point, a hostile Brighton simply cut a canal to Elwood's border and dumped its floodwaters into what early historian John Cooper described as the comical autonomous streaming uh, kingdom of Elwood the creation of Victoria and Australia respectively, humans have occupied Elwood for up to 40,000 years or more. Yet, in a minute of uh, a fra minute fraction of this time, we have travelled from the indigenous landscape to an information age. Extraordinary journey uh, documented in... We're on our walk through Elwood and we're walking along the canal. That's our meet-up walking group going along the canal, sorry. <laughs> it got sorted out that, uh, that it, it went to, um, uh, apparently to his, his, um, uh, his two daughters that he's going to pay, which one was eight and ten at the time. They're obviously much more grown up than that now. Um, but he was a major, fondly loved resident of the area. So they named the walk after him here, so there we go. So nice and they need to have chocolates. They're good for walkers. Great idea it's of David's to, to have put oxygen in your blood. Really? Oh, how about that? We're learning something all the time. There's a health reason behind everything. In 1996, it was sold over to developers and they turned it into a modern block of flat. Some of the buildings here go way back to the very early days here. Um, there was also a, a famous uh, cyclist uh, that had his. Uh, shop right here at um, 82 with this side over here. And we're just going to go around here just briefly to Bortier Street. And I'm just going to point out to you four items in here by a chap who uh, ran his uh, cycling business um, basically from the early part of the 20th century. And he had a shop in 82. They're all cafes here these days, it seems to be. The odd dress shop is a bit of a token gesture, I suppose. But mostly they're all food shops down the street here. Uh, but he had a and was assembled to the house, um, the first of six children on Elwood Hill on land purchased from spec, uh, spec, um, speculator Joseph Fortier. Uh, for, the early, uh, for the next half of the century, the Broadbents advocated unceasingly for improvements to Elwood. This is a former bank uh, knocked over by Ronald Ryan. You might remember that name. Ronald Ryan robbed this bank in Elwood. We have a couple of still photos of the walking group that David asked me to take. 